So, welcome. We are uh, coming up on Transfiguration Sunday. So here are the here are these. And um, if you're local, uh, just a reminder, since it's Transfiguration, we're going to have a potluck on Sunday to uh, celebrate you know, before the beginning of Lent. And then we're still discussing our uh, schedule for for Lent, but um, but maybe we'll we'll fit some soup suppers in there. So you got to get out. You know, got to come on down and be part of the church. Uh, it's not quite the same. I know almost, most of you sitting at home know it's not the same, and I know you want to be here, but uh, but do not be afraid. Come to church. Um, so for Transfiguration Sunday, our um, Intro it is, is from Psalm 84, and it jumps around a bit, but uh, from Psalm 84. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Ever singing your praise. How lovely is your dwelling place, O <coughs> Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart flies sing for joy to the living God. Behold our shield, O God. Look up in the face of your anointed. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk upright. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Ever, ever singing, singing your, your praise. praise. Um, hmm, what, what, I was trying to think, maybe, um, what uh, part of this, why do we have this as, uh, for Transfiguration Sunday? Or, um, dwelling in the Lord's house, ever singing your play, a bit of a, a vision of heaven and the glory of, of uh, that's there. Um, sometimes the sometimes the psalms can be <laughs> a little bit uh, interesting. Why did they choose these to fit for the Sunday? But um, oh, right. so I think then, the collect is yeah. The collect is very clear for this Sunday. So we'll pray that. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So, um, you need to leave. You need to be somewhere at four o'clock. Yes, I will. Okay. So if I leave by ten, I should be. And you guys want to be gone, getting home. So, um, so we'll try to wrap up early. Um, so then, for our schedule. Uh, I was saying one option we could do is continue doing Bible study at three, do Lent worship at four, and then if if we then five o'clock if um, we could they could do soup supper afterwards if if people want to do soup supper we might not do soup we probably wouldn't do soup supper every week but um, but we could do that but that does that sound however you want to do it any. That, I think the sun's up till six o'clock or so now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of in the dark. Yeah, seven well, o'clock is. Uh, on March tenth, we go to daylight savings time, so we pick up an extra hour. <laughs> it'll be. That means that it'll be. Um, oh, br it'll be bright Spring. later. So, so then after that, then it would even be bright till eight o'clock at night almost. Yeah. But, uh, but anyways, so. Um, Maybe we'll try that this year. Do three o'clock Bible study, four o'clock worship, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then at least a couple of times maybe soup supper. So, but if 
right? I don't hear too many objections. Um, all right, then getting on to the, we'll start with the gospel again. A fairly well-known story, but um, but maybe try to think a little bit about what's different. What do you remember from the other gospel stories? I mean, we're not going to have them open side by side, but if there's anything in particular that you you notice that's different uh, of this one, the um, obviously the transfiguration is a very well known. Everybody remembers and knows the story, right? So, um, so Luke twenty eight. It's all kind of one big paragraph, huh? So, um, maybe one verse at a time. Then, Ray if it can start. Now, us. about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure. When uh, another half. Oh, which was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Which was about to accomplish. Which he was about he to was, accomplish. Yeah. Now Peter and oh. those... Um, I was just thinking for a second. Let's pause. He was about to accomplish. His departure, which he was about to accomplish. That's kind of a strange mm -hmm. phrase, isn't it? Uh, you would never say someone was about to accomplish a departure, right? <laughs> um, but this is a unique departure. That, you know, and in almost all of the, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, John does not... Uh, I'm pretty sure John does not um, contain... Uh, a story of the transfiguration, even though he was, right, I'm looking at my notes that John isn't listed. Even though John was there, uh, since it was part of why we assume John was written later, that most of the time, he's, he, if Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote about it, John didn't, even though he was one of the only couple of people who were there, actually saw it. So I guess he didn't have anything to add to the story. Um, uh, his face, his clothing became dazzling white. Now, some of them said like, like snow or as no launderer could get them, right? Does that sound familiar? No laundry soap could make, you know, could make it um, as white as that. But Luke just says, just dazzling white. Dazzling, huh? Um, uh, spark, almost sparkly white. Um... And then as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered. So this is where we're getting the transfiguration that Jesus was transfigured. His figure, it, you know, it was that his glory was shining through his human body, which normally he, 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 he kept normal. But it, in this moment, the, uh, the, uh, the glorified body glory of his of his divinity is showing through him uh, fig, figuring through him um, so his face is bright as uh, well they'll see after his resurrection in you know, in like especially in John's revelation his face is bright and light in heaven there is no sun or moon because there we don't need light God will be our light so um, two men talking with him now, Moses and Elijah. How did they know they were Moses and Elijah? Did they have little name tags on that said, Hello, my name is Moses? <laughs> they, they just knew. Yeah. They just knew. <laughs> have you ever had that experience? Where they, you know somebody that you don't know? Well, probably not in, in a wake life, but in a, in a more maybe in a dream, huh? Have you ever had a dream where there was somebody there and you knew it was them, but either the, it was somebody who it didn't look at, at all like the person who, who that, that you knew it was, or you have no idea why you knew that was that person was that? You ever never had a dream like that? I can't. I mean, I know I've had that experience in dreams, but um, I do not okay. remember anything like that. All right, I'm not forcing anyone to do that, but. Uh, they just knew Moses, um, 
Now, Elijah was known for wearing kind of wild clothing, wilderness clothing, maybe a bit like John the Baptist, uh, camel's hair or something, but, uh, but um, yeah, it doesn't say how they knew. They just knew. Um, anything, any other thoughts from those verses? Okay, we'll go a few more. <coughs> Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Uh, let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As he was saying this thing, a cloud came and overshadowed, overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. Okay, let, they were so, afraid, but Peter, John, and James didn't go on the cloud. Uh, oh, yeah, overshadowed. What does overshadowed mean? That's uh, uh, so right. It's not as if it, they were. In the cloud, that would be like fog, right? Yeah. So that would they would be in it. So this cloud is above them, close to them, blocking out the sun. Um, or is it a white? Is it a white puffy cloud? Uh, Doesn't tell us that. No. Overshadowed. I could see if I can get a definition of overshadowed because it's uh, it's a word that. I mean, obviously, we hear it almost every year when we read this story, but um, but it's not one that we use for anywhere else, is it? Overshadowed the uh, the well. They, we talk about it with Mary and Gabriel. How shall this be? The power of the Most Shot High will overshadow you, right? Um, overshadow. Um, Oh, this isn't a good one to get a word definition, but um, overshadow. Tower above, cast a shadow over, appear much more prominent or important than. Um, so well, it says here, uh, it Confirms that Jesus is the long expected prophet like Moses. Mm hmm. Well, and that particularly in the words, you know, but uh, just so this was a cloud, must have kind of, and they must not have been just sitting up there uh, with a clouded sky. This, the cloud was definitely obvious, definitely just came and was prominent and, and something interesting about the clouds. Now, in weather, it's not uncommon for clouds to form at the tops of mountains. The turbulence of the air passing over the mountains can cause the, um, the moisture to form clouds. Um, but this one definitely was something different about this. Uh, um, but, so Peter, they were, they were heavy with sleep. You know, they had been on a busy schedule traveling, talking with people, taking care of them, healing, all these sorts of things. So Peter and James and John are, and I've had these times, especially like firefighting, when we're working long days, and you sit down and you can be asleep really, or, or in the army training, you can be asleep leaning against your backpack in, in no time. So I, it seems to be, and, the, and then when you wake up from a sleep, right? Yeah. When uh, we woke up in the middle of the night, you know, somebody had run into our car out here. I was like, kind of, <laughs> I didn't even heard it. I didn't realize what was going on. You know, Tanya was like, somebody just hit our car. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it can take a moment to figure out what's going on. If you, and, uh, but they became fully awake. That gets their attention. Mm -hmm. When they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Um, and Peter thinks out loud and says, Hey, let's 
make some shelters. Now, for them, these shelters would not be like a cloth tent. Uh, they're not saying, well, I mean, maybe he thought, well, let me run down it. But more likely he's saying, like, um, make a shelter out of the wood and whatever they have lying around. Um, we might, when we were kids, we would make houses or forts in the woods, you know, pile up sticks and throw leaves on them and stuff. Yeah. Or um, if you're survival in the wilderness, you might have to do that. Uh, that's not uncommon in that area to make uh, shelters like that. Uh, if, if you didn't have cloth for tents, the cloth tents were not uncommon either. Uh, the Apostle Paul was a tent maker, you know, with canvas cloth. But um, but uh, the tent, the shelter would mean shade or something, just sticks and th whatever they had on hand. Not because uh, Peter obviously doesn't want to run down and go buy a shade tent and bring it back. <laughs> he wants to stay there. Um, right it's good that we're here yeah let's stay here for let's let's not leave you know <laughs> uh let's not go anywhere let's stay right here um so um all right and uh ready, moving on then ready for the voice and and when the voice had spoke oh and a voice came out of the cloud saying this is my son my chosen one Listen to him. Mm -hmm. And when the voice, and when when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. Yeah. So as you were saying, um, the voice in particular makes it clear what's a bit, what's where the focus is supposed to be. Um, this is my son. My chosen one, listen to him. Um, so, so stop talking. Yeah, sometimes yeah, that happens, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm listening, but let me tell you, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm listening, yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> there's some people who, who adopted a child from Russia and he had a pretty heavy accent and he was, it was young, but he was trying to speak to the parents and, and after he'd been there for a while, and they were trying to be polite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they couldn't always understand what he was trying to say. But they were, you know, as you, you try to be polite. It, uh, Americans do more so than some other cultures. But uh, he's, he, he's like, he could tell they weren't understanding what he was saying. He said, don't ya ya me. I'm talking to you, mama. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's like, you know, help me to, to make sure I'm saying the right thing, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, Peter, shut up <laughs> and listen. <laughs> um, this is my son, the chosen one. They kept silent, found alone. Uh, all right, so when the voice had spoken. Now this is, this is kind of curious, isn't it? The voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. So the, the voice is coming. It's like they look up into the clouds like where's the voice coming from and then when they look down Moses and Elijah have disappeared right um, and they kept and, and Jesus was transfigured while they were still asleep yeah so it, that when they woke up they seen his radiance right they didn't notice it happening uh, they felt they had fallen asleep or dozing off or whatever How, um, however deep of yeah and then uh, talking with Moses and Elijah. And then, then they interrupted. You know, then Peter's like, oh, hey, let's build some shelters. And it's like, well, we're having a conversation here. You know, <laughs> you, you, know you were welcome to stay, you know, abide, but don't just interrupt us, you know, when you, know, when you don't even, what, what, you think they were talking about, does <laughs> this say that they were talking about his departure, that he was about to happen? Um, fulfilling the law and the prophets, um, lots of different ways. You probably, you guys have probably heard lots of transfiguration sermons, Sundays, Sunday sermons. Um, fulfilling the law and the prophets. Um, Moses and Elijah had talked about this, and like we often, 
we read the book of Revelation or something and we get some ideas of what we think the, is going to happen, but then it's, oh, this is, this is what it meant. You know, this, you know, for them, seeing Jesus live out this life and now they get to talk with him about, oh, this is, uh, this is how it fit with, with Passover and this is how it fit with the Exodus and crossing the Red Sea and, 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 and. Um, so. <laughs> Isn't it nice we have these stories and we don't have to watch them and try to figure them out? Mm -hmm. We have them and we can figure them out. Right. But we don't all figure them out the same. Now you look around nature, and you can you can come to the conclusion that there must be some creator, yes. some god, uh, and you know it's. I mean, only ten percent of people around in all cultures are atheists, even in our scientific uh, culture that we live in, a materialistic culture. But um, and, but we but you don't get to Jesus died for your sins. You know, by looking at the mountains and the sunsets and the oceans and all the beauty of the world around us, um, that's you know. So you only get ha part way to God. That comes out of here. Yes, but He's spoken to us. Yeah. He's given us, so we can we get as much as we allow ourselves to read and and see some of what Moses and Elijah were putting together. Yeah. Um, Listen to him. Then they were silent, overwhelmed. Yeah, as we will be when we're standing before mm -hmm. God, Heavenly Father. When He speaks, we'll be like, "Oops, oh, <laughs> be quiet now." <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, uh, like, like a, like, well, like you, sh like most of us were when we got to boot camp and the drill sergeant was telling us what to do. You know, yelling at us. Uh, there's a few who were ready to to challenge them right away. <laughs> there's always a few, right? But most of us were like, "Yes, sir, as fast as I can, sir." How high? Uh, so, um, all right. Anything else uh, from the Transfiguration story? Uh, then. Now the readings today you know, uh, all fit together. We're not, we're, the, even the epistle was picked to, to go with this. Let's go to Deuteronomy, Old Testament lesson. Deuteronomy 34, the end of the book of Deuteronomy. And now most of Deuteronomy we believe, and Jesus can kind of uh, confirms, was written by Moses. This chapter may not have been written by Moses. <laughs> because how could Moses write about his death? Um, so this one might have been added by Joshua or something. But, uh, but um, somebody who knew the story, and maybe Joshua um, had gone along with him, um, following at a distance, as Joshua did, at Mount Sinai, uh, 34, 1 to 12. So this is the whole chapter. It's not a, a real long chapter. So, um, all right, we got big names here. So I guess I should probably read the first few verses. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo. So this, they're, they're near Jericho. There are... They are pretty, they're finishing up the preparation to be ready to cross the Jordan River <coughs> into Jericho and start conquering and taking the Holy Land, the Promised Land. <coughs> the top of Mount Pisgah, top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho, and the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead as far as Dan. Now, um, so if you're standing on a nice high mountain on the on the east side of the Jordan River, you could see pretty much all of the Holy Land. You're not on the not on the Mediterranean side, but everything facing on the Jordan side, uh, Jordan River Valley, 
uh, up and down. It's, we, you, as we've said, it's only 90, 100 miles or so from end to end, 150 miles. So if you're on a nice high spot, you could see most of it. Um, just as if you drive up the hill here to Del Rio, you can see way off into the mountains, right? Mm -hmm. um, in both, especially to the, to the west. Um, Pisca, there was actually a hill in Wisconsin called Pisca. It had a state park on it, Mount Pisca. So I think, and they took it out of the Bible. Um, all right. Uh, so, verse 2, all of Naphtali, so these are the, tr the lands where the different tribes will be given and settled, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, as far as the western sea, that's, that means the, That'd be the Mediterranean. Mediterranean. Um, is this, now this could be um, a bit of a supernatural vision. I don't know that I don't know if there's a, a, an actual mountain or hill in that area that can actually see over but or maybe he can see in certain areas he could see through the between the mountains he could see the sea on the other side in certain places um, but not not this doesn't mean that he can see every inch of every you know square inch of the whole land but he's got a really nice view of all of it um, <clears throat> The Negev, that's the, the, the going the desert to the south. The plain, that is the valley of Jericho, right, it would be right in front of him. Uh, the city of palm trees as far as Zoar. Okay, Zoar, we kind of lose track of Zoar, but that was another city or town. Um, that, I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert. I had to learn some of the biblical archaeology for a test on the book of Exodus and Torah, but I wasn't very good at it. So, I mean, I know Jericho and Jerusalem and Bethlehem and, uh, you know, some of those. Um, all right. So, then can we read there? The, the names look pretty... And, and the Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth, Beth Peor. Peor. Mm -hmm. But no one knows the place of his burial to this day. Yeah. So they know the story, but you, so even if Joshua was with him, Joshua was not there at the very last moment when he was buried. Now here's a commentary on this. Yeah. Uh, Moses was allowed to stand in the promised land at Christ's transfiguration. You're right. That's part of why this is one of the readings chosen to go with the transfiguration Sunday. He was then, after his death, and in death we are purified of our sins, then allowed to stand in the promised land with Christ. Um, so the fulfillment of so many of the things that he had written and spoken and promised about. Um, okay, seven and eight. Uh, yeah. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was undimmed and his vigor unabated. And the people of Israel went for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. Yeah, so first off, wow, 120 years old, <laughs> his eyes are undimmed, his vigor unabated. I could use a little of that. <laughs> Couldn't we all? <laughs> Um, <laughs> why, why might that be? Why would he, at 120 years old, not have any cataracts or, or <laughs> vision problems, no, uh, or not even vigor, his energy? You, know, um, you particularly see that on Mount Sinai when he's going up and down the mountain, he's got tablets of rock you know, to carry and... Um, No guesses why he 
<laughs> he probably didn't smoke. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or diet. drink. Right. Their and diet they, was good. They did a healthy diet, free health care. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as much health care as it was available then. Um, and God was taking care of him. Mm -hmm. yeah. God was that with was him. it more than anything. Yeah. Yes, God because when he would spend time with God, what would happen? Do you remember his face? Would shine. Would shine and would reflect the, the glory, the energy of God. He would wear a veil so that the people could not see the, the shining, diminishing, and be, you know, afraid, scared, you know, frightened by that, what it's something. Um, I think that part of that, he's taking on, the, so from spending time in the presence of God, that close to God, closer than any other man till the disciples with Jesus. Uh, but Jesus, again, his divinity was subdued most of the time he w was on there. Moses didn't know Jesus. No, he didn't know Jesus, he but knew he of him. prophesied of him. But I'm saying he was in the presence of God the Father, or yeah. heard Jesus, or, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but he took in that energy from God of being in his presence that revigorated him, invigorated him, and kept him from getting his body from aging, basically. You know, and when we're living in the presence of God, <laughs> our bodies won't age, and, you know, we'll live forever. Uh, you know, at whatever age that is, that we're, that we're when we get there, um, we won't get older. It'd be like is people we read about who live nine hundred thousands of years of old stuff. So, <laughs> without getting old and, and no well, and what things. kept old Mal Methuselah alive so for, for so long? He was nine hundred and something. Yeah, that's probably that's probably another topic for another day. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but he, so he had spent time in the presence of God, and and, and the, we can we from the story of his face shining, and we, you know, he, he took in energy, God, uh, God's creative energy, you know, kept him healthy He's and alive. Healthy and young. Um, wept for Moses thirty days, which kind of struck me because. Even if our president died, now we, our, our nation would be in shock for 30 days, but would we be in mourning for 30 days? We wouldn't, but years and years ago, I'll bet when Lincoln was assassinated, they were in mourning for 30 days. Yeah. Women used to mourn for their husbands when they died for a year. Yeah. 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 Or a black armband at, least, at a minimum or something, yeah. Um, Kennedy, how long did the nation mourn when Kennedy was assassinated? I think it was about two weeks. It took that long uh, to get the, uh, the funeral procession and everything uh, organized. Yeah, but I, now... I remember exactly where I was. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Was yeah. Between classes at uh, Eastern. Yeah, that would have been Everybody around. Was standing around listening to a radio, you know, it was before there was yeah, they had little, transistor radios. Yeah, the there. little ones. People pulled out radios in between classes. Well, y yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to check the news or for well, open to know, catch this music. Was before uh, yeah, computers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, we could have done that. I guess I'm sure some kids did that in my day too. You. Kids today with phones, I'm sure they listen to music, but oh, yeah, but those transistor radios weren't very big. They, no, they're they not big, huge, they they're, were they're a little bit smaller than this, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, and, and, but thicker, Thick. like a yeah. book, like a Bible, pocket Bible kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I had a transistor radio that if you fold the Bible up there, it was about the same size. Yeah, and it had in the handle had batteries. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, um, it's too poor, I didn't have one. But <laughs> uh, you, late, you know, lately, you know, our world moves at such a fast pace. Um, you, we might have this flag at half staff for two weeks, maybe a month if the president died in office. Mm -hmm. But most people would be pretty much moved on. With, 
Now it would be in our memory. We'd still be kind of grieving in a sense, like like I mean, you still remember grieving in a, in some ways. You're still affected by that, you know, that the president was shot, and and you know, but um, but um, in, in my lifetime, there's three things that I can re vividly remember. That's Kennedy's assassination, uh, Mount, the explosion of Mount St. Helens. Yeah. And 9/11. Mm -hmm. And in my my parents, my mom was uh, familiar with uh, Pearl Harbor Day. Mm -hmm. She had just delivered my brother and I. <laughs> yeah. My brother was in Pearl Harbor. Was he? But he lived, and he swam ashore and shipped us. Yeah, there. those memorable days. Yeah, those are things. That yeah. I'm They're sure. burned right into you. Yes. Yeah. 9-11. Um, oh, the Challenger blowing up. That was a big day, the, yeah. the space shuttle. I don't remember what day that was, so I remember it happening. Right, January. Um, yeah. Well, right, we've forgotten the, the date. So that one's fading. Yeah. What was uh, Reagan's uh, famous saying there, Godspeed Challenger? It was, what, a minute and eight seconds? Yeah. It was January of 85, 86. Um, but, 86, I think. But, um, so anyways, they, but the whole country here for Moses is basically, I mean, the whole country is in mourning as if a family member has died. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, they... I took care of the animals who did what they had to do, but yeah, but everybody prayed and wailed and did those sorts of things. Gnashing of teeth. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Then nine and ten. Okay. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And there was not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. All right. Um, son of Nun. Now it, it says he's full of the spirit of wisdom. Now wisdom, in this case, meaning wisdom from God, not just human wisdom. You know, a, a similar to John 1 says the word, logos, wisdom was with God. The word was uh, God in the, in the beginning. Um, and it doesn't say he just received it by believing, but by Moses actually laid his hands on him. You know, a, a reminder, God uses physical thing, actions, uh, and we continue doing this, laying on of hands, ordination uh, for new pastors. Uh, um, we bless uh, at baptism. The pastor puts his hand on the baby, says blessings on the baby, uh, confirmation, um, those things. We still do a laying out of hands. That it's not just a not just a touching, but it's an actually of a, a transfer of God's spirit, you know, to those people and blessing. You know, for the baby is part of the transfer to them of the Holy Spirit, um, and for a new pastor, it, it's a part of the spirit and office of them of the of ministry to them. Um, so you can't, you can't do this on the internet, stand in front of your TV screen, you know, and, yeah. or you shouldn't do this on the internet with the, you know, um, it should be an actual physical laying on of hands. So, uh, the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord commanded. And no one arisen face to face in the, uh, again. At least not until the uh, disciples who walked and talked with Jesus for three years. Um, okay. And yeah, finish up then. None like him for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt. To Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land. And for all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all 
Israel. Terror, not as a terrorist, but as a demonstration of God's power. That you, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, God's working through him, not Moses himself, because Moses didn't even want to do it. You know, get somebody else, God. I'm 80 years old, I'm retired, I'm happy where I'm at. Yeah. What was Moses' sin? I forgot. Um, he doubted the Lord, didn't he? Right. Well, uh, there were, the first time that he got water from the rock, he was supposed to strike the wa rock with the stick, and the, and then and I don't remember, and the water would come out. The next time, God told him to command water to come out of the rock, and he, uh, in his temper or whatever, also struck it while he was commanding water to come out of the rock, and he was kind of swearing at the people, like, here, God's being merciful to you, you don't deserve it, you know, <laughs> some water, come out of you rock. Um, so, it was because he, because he struck the stone with the rock, now obviously that doesn't seem like a big deal, but God knows what was going on in his heart and in his head, that, that he wasn't trusting God's word that speaking the words would be enough. He, you know, there, now there's an occasion, we're talking about the laying on of hands of the physical action, you know, being the spiritual hap, uh, act happening. Uh, um, he was supposed to trust the words of God were to, enough, uh, and whether it was in his temper or how, what he, he decided to also hit the rock with his staff at the same time. So uh, God saw that as a as a doubt, a doubting of God's word. Not enough faith. Yeah, that was right. That was the sin that he. He should have trusted because he trusted God to keep the Red Sea open. Well, he trusted God better than heart, almost anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and but and like I said, it doesn't seem like a big difference to us, but. To you know, for but God knows what was in Moses' heart, you know, that he was doubting God in that moment. So, um, so we shouldn't question God of being too harsh on Moses. <clears throat> and he's 120 years old, it's time to time to hang him up, yeah. <laughs> and, he's, and he's going to a better place when you get to be 120, Dorothea, you can. Yeah, then we'll take you up to Mount Pisgah and <laughs> take you up to Mount Tolman <laughs> <laughs> or Moses Mountain. Uh, so, so. Uh, all right, we'll read through Hebrews. We won't have a lot of time to chat about it since you all you all got appointments today, but. Um, no appointments that for the next few months, though. <laughs> it's, you know, Lent worship. Uh, Hebrews 3, 1 through 12, 6. 7, 7. So this, this is the writer of the Hebrews, maybe the Apostle Paul, clarifying where, who our focus should be on. I thought Peter wrote Hebrews. Uh, some people think it might be Peter. It does. It never specifically says who. So there's a lot of different and um, theories. But um, but Pastor Gooden, who has studied more than I have, uh, thinks that Apostle he thinks Apostle Paul is a good a good theory, the best theory. So. Hebrews 3, 1 through 6. And <coughs> we're back to Ray to start when he gets, when he gets there. Okay. Uh, therefore, <coughs> holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses who was faithful in all God's house. Okay. Holy brothers, well, that's a nice calling, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, we're all holy brothers, um, and not just not just meaning the men, but uh, all of, all of the children of God. Um, have, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, faithful to Him, appointed <coughs> even more so than Moses was, right? 
um, even more than Moses. Um, now Moses uh, often uh, times in the epistles is is used as a reference to the Torah, the Old Testament, particularly the law of the Torah, of the Old Testament, right? The Ten Commandments, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. Um, this is what how you should act. This is what you should do um, uh, as God's people. So the, uh, also be thinking about not just Moses the person, but also the law, the place of the law in, as God, in our lives as God's people. Um, okay. Three. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house for more honor than the house itself. Okay, so how is Jesus the builder of the house and Moses the house? <laughs> Interesting picture, metaphor. You, yeah. um, well, Jesus is, is, is the word of God. Moses received the word of God and then wrote it down. So Jesus is the Word of God. Moses wrote the Word of God. <laughs> uh, the, the person who builds a house has to have the whole thing in his head. You know, and, um, the house might look great, but somebody had to think it all up and put it together and build, you know, right? So mm -hmm. um, it's the person who thought it up who should get more honor than, than the thing that was made. Um, and, you know, well, we don't have a lot of time to think through all of these, but, uh, okay, four, verse four. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Mm hmm Reminds us to give credit to God for all things. Um, even as we almost weekly learn more and more about our universe, that there's more planets and, you know, stars and things, uh, it was all built, designed, put together by God. Uh, he was to give him honor and glory. Don't worship the stars. Don't worship the animals. Don't worship the sea or the mountains. Worship the one who put them all there. Uh, so, um, okay, five and six. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house if indeed we hold fast to our confidence and our boosting in our hope. Mm -hmm. um, now that does kind of relate to Peter. Peter said, we are living stones. Uh, the church is built of living stones. We are the living stones when, you know, as the people of God. Uh, so that does kind of relate to what Peter said. Um, but um, Moses, yeah, spoke, testified, wrote down the things that God gave him to say, pointing forward to Christ. And then as you, as you pointed out, he gets to stand with Jesus at this mount of transfiguration as Jesus is about to really focus in towards Jerusalem and the work that Jesus has to do there. His, his departure, his exodus. Um, so the, the story of the Passover and the exodus is a picture, story, metaphor of life, of God saving us from our slavery to sin, of passing through baptism, the Red Sea, into the Promised Land. Um, yeah, uh, and we're still kind of, we're still in that journey, still crossing through, because the promised land is still waiting for us in the resurrection, the new heaven and the new earth, uh, when everything will be perfect and wonderful and we'll live in God's presence and be uh, kept holy by, and healthy by his creative energy. Um, so. Uh, Luther, uh said who the author of the epistle to the Hebrews, whoever he is, mm -hmm. whether Paul or as I think, 
Apollos. Mm -hmm. Apollos is another. He was the servant of Paul, wasn't he? Um, they, they were, well, they both worked in Corinth at different times, they, and often I think they did work together. Yeah, he never <laughs> specifically mentions himself. One theory of why it could be Paul is because Paul didn't necessarily always get along with the Jews because they got mad at him for bringing the Gentiles in. So if he had named himself, although Paul was a scholar of the Old Testament, so he could certainly argue all of the Old Testament points that are in Hebrews. Um, but if he had named himself, his letter might not have been well received by the Hebrew people. Um, um, but, um, but it could have been Apollos, could have been Peter, yeah. Like I said, e even today, with all of our, what we know, or think we know, there's no, there's no agreement among the scholars about who wrote it. <laughs> there's just theories. So, um, Moses was faithful you know, as a servant, but Jesus is the son. Listen to him. Uh, yeah, don't, yeah, and some people do get distracted worshiping angels or, or saints Pray or the saints or, or the Blessed Virgin Mary. I mean, the patriarch, yeah. Moses, he, he still is held up, you know, sometimes uh, by particularly um, Jews, uh, you know, so, yeah. Um, well, uh, Solomon built this house. David was the great king. You know, who are you, Jesus? You know, no, Jesus is the Son of God. <laughs> Don't get distracted by the others. <coughs> okay? Ah. Uh. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you <coughs> that you have given us your word. You continue to speak to us. Uh, help us to keep focus on Jesus only, to look forward to the day when we will see him face to face in all of his dazzling glory, uh, shining brighter than the sun, and um, help keep us and prepare us for that time. And uh, we we pray for all those in need in our congregation, our community, our, our country and the world in all of the turmoil and pandemic and everything going on uh, at this time. And pray all these things as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.